Race Cars, a children's book about white privilege. Written by Jenny Devinney and edited by Charnay Gordon. Race Cars, a children's book about white privilege. This is a note from the author. I hope you take a moment to read it and understand why this book is being written. As a note, this is a better together book, a book that's best read together with a child and a grown up. This is Chase. Chase is a black race car. This is Ace. Ace is a white race car. They live in a world with lots of other race cars, big ones, small ones, short ones, tall ones, old ones, new ones, brown ones, and blue ones. Chase and Ace have been best friends forever. For as long as they can remember, they have been training together for the world famous annual race car race. Last year, they were finally old enough to enter the race. For as long as anyone could remember, Every year when the big race came around, a white car would win the race. A white car would win fourth place, third place, second place, and first place. Until last year. Last year, Chase won first place and Ace won fourth place. Sometimes competition can come between friends, but not these two. Ace was so happy for Chase and Chase was so happy for Ace. They loved to race and they did not care about place. There were, however, some cars that did care about place. These cars were on the race committee. No one had ever seen them, but everyone knew who they were. They were a group of white cars that made all the rules for the annual race car race. When the committee heard about Chase winning, they were not happy. A black car had never won first place and they did not want things to change. We have given white cars the fastest tires and the most powerful engines, they roared. How could a black car have won? For the next race, the committee decided to change a few of the rules to make it easier for white cars to win and harder for all the other cars. All agreed except one, Grace. Something about it just didn't feel right to her. She was used to things not feeling fair after all. Grace was the youngest committee member and the only girl. But she didn't say anything because everyone else felt so strongly. The next year rolled around and Chase and Ace were ready to race again. They spent all summer training and they knew the route by heart. Chase started off. Faster than ever, he zipped around the track as the crowd cheered him on. Go Chase, go Chase. Once around the track, straight through the cornfield, over the blue mountain, through the magical forest. Chase was getting ready to cross the bridge when he noticed a sign that had not been there before. There's the magical forest. Bridge is for white cars only. All other cars must go around the river. Chase paused for a second. Hmm, that's strange, he thought. But he didn't want to waste any more time. Chase sped around the river as fast as he could and jumped over the finish line. Even without taking the bridge, Chase managed to come in second place. Ace came in first place. Ace was so happy for Chase, and Chase was so happy for Ace. They loved to race, and they did not care about place. Oh, looky, going around the river. But back at home, something was bothering Chase. It just didn't seem fair that the bridge was for white cars only. Was he not as good as the white cars? Was something wrong with him? He shrugged it off and decided to train even harder for next year. Back at Ace's house, Ace was snuggled up in bed smiling. He did not expect to be faster than Chase. In their practices, Chase was always fastest. I must be getting faster, he thought. And he drifted off to sleep, dreaming of next year's race car race. Back at the committee, the white cars were still not happy that Chase had won second place. 
they decided to change more rules to make it easier for white cars to win and even harder for all other cars to win. Grace didn't think it was fair, but she didn't want to lose her place at the table, so she stayed silent. The next year rolled around, and Chase and Ace were ready to race. Chase started off faster than ever. He zipped around the tracks as the cars cheered him on. Go, Chase! Go, Chase! Go, Chase! Go, Chase! Then he whizzed through the cornfields in record time. He made it to the Blue Mountain in a blink of an eye. But at the top of the mountain, a race officer stopped him. Pull over, please. I need to see some identification. Chase paused for a second. Hmm, that's strange, he thought. None of the white cars seemed to be getting stopped. But he didn't want to waste any more time. He showed the officer his identification and continued to and continued the race through the magical forest. Chase sped around the river as fast as he could and jumped over the finish line. But because the race officer stopped him, Chase did not place, and Ace came in first instead. Chase was happy for Ace, but they were both upset about Chase's race. They loved to race and did not care about place, but the committee had just announced a new rule. Cars that did not place this year could no longer race next year. Next year, Chase would not be allowed to race. Seems unfair to me. Back at home, Chase was devastated. He didn't care about place, but he loved to race. What would he do now? Chase could not help feeling that he was not as good as the other cars. He felt like something was definitely wrong with him. Why else would he not be allowed to race? That night, Chase cried himself into a long, deep sleep. Back at Ace's house, Ace was snuggled up in bed, but something didn't feel quite right. He did not understand why Chase didn't place. He's the fast car I know, thought Ace. Next year would not be the same without his best friend. Chase was the reason Ace liked to race in the first place. Ace sighed and shrugged his shoulders and drifted off into a long, deep sleep. Back at the building where the race committee held their meeting, Grace, Grace tried to speak out against Chase being pulled over in the race. She knew it wasn't fair, and some of the committee members agreed, but others didn't. We need to change the rules of the race to make it fair and equal for all. Grace said softly. Yes, we agree, whispered two more cars. But most remained silent or ignored her. They were afraid of change and they didn't want to lose their place at the table. Next year rolled around and Chase was at the race to cheer his best friend on. Ace started off faster than ever. Zoom! He zipped around the track as the crowds cheered him on. Go Ace! Go Ace, go Ace, go Ace. Then he whizzed through the cornfields in record time. He made it up the blue mountain in the blink of an eye. As Ace was headed for the magical forest, he saw a sign that made him pause. A fork in the road with two separate paths, one for white cars and the other for all other cars. Why have I never noticed this before, thought Ace. Ace wanted to know what was down the other path. He wanted to understand what the race was like for Chase. He took a right and went down the longer path instead of the shorter one. Sped off into the magical forest faster and faster until he realized he was lost. Back at the track, the race committee was starting to get worried. All cars had finished the race except for their star race car, Ace. Where could he be? The race officials looked everywhere, but they could not find Ace. The committee decided to hold a meeting to figure out the best way to find Ace. We need to find the fastest car, said one. That car should surely be able to find Ace. But Ace is our fastest car, said another. No, shouted a voice from the back of the room. And the committee turned to see where it had come from. It was Grace, and she could not stay silent anymore. This time, they would listen. 
the fastest race car is Chase, even though we didn't ever let Chase have a fair race, said Grace. Take down those unfair signs. If we let Chase race at his fastest pace, we'll surely be able to find Ace. Although Chase was still upset that the committee did not allow him to race this year, he quickly agreed to help save his best friend. Here I come, Ace, said Chase. He zipped around the track as the crowds cheered him on. Go, Chase! Go, Chase! Then he whizzed through the cornfields in record time. He made it up the Blue Mountain in the blink of an eye. When he got to the magical forest, he saw Ace speeding towards him. I'm so sorry. It took me so long to realize how much harder for you it is to win this race, Chase said. That Ace and the best friends embraced. Then together, Ace and Chase finished the race. The end. This part of the book is about discussing what you heard in the story with a grown up. You look at the questions and you think about your answer. Then you talk about it with a grown up. I'll read the questions and I hope you take some time to talk about them with a grown up. Can you think of any place in your own life where mostly white people are in charge of making rules or have power? Why do you think the race committee was so upset that Chase won the race? What do you think some other reactions to him winning could have been? Like, how do you think the other black hearts might have felt seeing him win? This is Jenny Devaney. She is the author of the book. This is her author's note. This is the editor of the book, Charnay Gordon. This is the editor's note. I hope you take a moment to read both notes. The end.